I mean, what, what does a linebacker need to be able to do to play in your system? What, what do you? What are attributes? Mm -hmm. well, the first thing we want them to be, we want them to be tough, and then also smart. Those guys have so much on their plate on every single snap that uh, you know you got to. They got to be able to think on their feet. They got to be able to react. Uh, they have to have great knowledge of, of the system and, and, and of offensive football. So those are the things that you know first and foremost have to be in place. And then obviously you look at the the measurables, the size, the speed, the change of direction, all those things come into play, but uh, if there's if there's two things that I would really emphasize at the linebacker position is being tough and being smooth. What, what jumped out at you about Jones? Because he's Yaga didn't have that mm -hmm. a ton of experience to mm -hmm. the knowledge of the game part. When you, when you watched him, what, what stood out to you? I, when we first watched him, boy, he, it looked like he had really good instincts. The thing um, that we questioned was that he was playing football in Germany. And so we were like, oh, we don't know what kind of football it is over there, the level of competition, we, there was a lot of unknowns. Um, once he moved to the United States and we were able to recruit him, we followed up with, with phone calls and got to know him. And, and boy, he's very impressive over the phone. Uh, he took the, the, the ACT and uh, had a 23 on the ACT. He's a German student. I mean, that was something, again, that was very impressive about him. And then we got updated film from his senior year that showed he can he can play. He was at Rebolt High School in Jacksonville, played uh, obviously uh, better competition than he did over in Germany. And, uh, you know, we just continued to do our homework and, and really it worked out really well for us and also Jacob. How important was it to hold on to Chris Weathered's commitment and, and get his uh, signature today? Mm -hmm. I, well, that was huge. You know, Chris is a is a tall, rangy athlete. He provides us with a lot of versatility. He can do some things in third on third down as far as rushing the passer. Uh, he's a very versatile linebacker. Special teams, he'll have an immediate impact uh, with his ability to run and, and change direction. So he was he was critical to this recruiting, recruiting he, he class. Said, he said today the biggest reason he stuck <clears throat> with Tennessee was that you guys offered him first among SEC schools mm -hmm. and kind of felt more valued at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. How much do you find that to be the case that early evaluations and offers, if, if you're able to get two guys before other schools, that that ends up helping you in the end? Sure, that, that, that certainly that's a, a, a big part of it. I think you can make a good first impression with a young man. They usually they remember their first offer, uh, and that can be powerful. Uh, but over the course of time, those things do wear off, and it really comes down to the relationships that you have to build from that first you know, initial uh, offer to the, you know, to signing day. And I think that's where we were able to um, establish ourselves with Chris and, and maintaining a great relationship. We talked uh, each and every single week and, and we recruited him very hard. Did you, um, when you evaluated your corners, did you realize they were also going to put on 20 pounds in the first month? I was the hoping that they would, I was hoping <laughs> they would put on some weight. I, I'm really impressed with, with what they've been able to do in a very short amount of time. You know, Emmanuel came to our camp. Uh, we knew about him. We really liked him. Um, and just, you know, here's again a, a young man that comes in. He's got a high GPA. He's got 22 credit hours towards college uh, coming out of high school and, and just a high character, very competitive young man. And, and uh, you know, I'm proud of him and what he's been able to accomplish in a very short amount of time. When you look at corners, though, I mean, everybody, a lot of people talk about they want a big corner. Mm -hmm. you, you got two smaller corners, and those two in particular. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for in a corner? Well, when How much you, is size a factor in yeah, a corner position? It, it is. It is certainly a factor. Um, but when you look at um, – when you look at Emmanuel, he has uh, an over a 30-inch wingspan. You know, he's a 5'11 corner, but when he, you know, he holds his arms out, we measured him. Uh, he uh, he's got some long arms, so he's going to be able to play the ball in the air. He had great ball skills when he was at camp, um, and so we're we're comfortable with you know his size right now and, and what he was able to show us. You know, DeAndre is a shorter, but man, is he quick. He can he's a guy that can get up and press the, some of those taller receivers at the line of scrimmage and make it very difficult for them. You know, at the beginning of the route. So uh, I'm I'm excited about both those young men. And, and, I know that we're going to rely on them heavily even in the first year. When you look at some of the other schools that you're competing with these guys against, they have championships and PCS bowls to back what they're selling. What are you selling that they can't offer? We're selling the commitment that this university has made to our student athletes, especially in the sport of football. When you come in and you look at our facilities, it's geared towards their personal development each and every single day. Uh, also in the academic arena, you know, when you go over to the Thornton Center and you see that uh, Joe Scoggins is over there and he has a tremendous staff at his disposal, uh, young men obviously recognize that and, and that's very attractive to them. So I think it's 
you know, the overall development of the of the player that that really attracts him to you know, overall. To see. Sorry, overall upgrade in speed size. Mm -hmm. Is it fair to say that there will be a number of these guys who will be pushing for some playing time? Yeah, there was no no question. I mean, all these guys are. I told them all, come in ready to compete, ready to play. You know, the thing that um, that'll do is is it'll. It'll create some some lumps for us early. We know that. We, we understand that. But we're building for the future here. This is a this is a long term process. This is no there's no quick fix. Um, you know, you, you look at our recruiting class. We didn't go out and get a lot of uh, junior college players. We had a couple um, where we need where we needed to. But by and large, we we fulfilled this class with with freshmen, and and uh, they're going to be thrown into the fray early. And that's just uh, part of the process. But we're we're developing a, our team for the future, and I think that's what's most important. John, just how much of a shot in the arm is a defensive lineman for a defensive mm -hmm. unit that loses six seniors from the last season? Yeah, that, that's that's really big, you know, to, to shore up the line of scrimmage, especially in this conference. Now, uh, you know, I understand that these guys aren't going to come in and have an immediate impact, you know, in the Southeastern Conference. I mean, an 18-year-old uh, freshman in college and competing against a, a fourth or fifth-year senior who's 23. 22 years old, uh, they're going to they're gonna have some, some work to do. But uh, again, everything is about longevity. Everything is about you know, building for the future. And, and I think this class gives us the opportunity to develop you know, our defensive line with some bigger body kids. I think they'll be more active than we've had in the past. And, and I think that uh, you know, even though we're going to take some lumps early, we're, we're building for the future. You have so much SEC experience with your past. With this defensive line in particular, this class, did, did you did you target some of these guys knowing, hey, we need this type of a guy to play in the SEC? Absolutely. You know, we, we went out and got some guys that, uh, that have uh, great size, but they also have the, the ability to move. And I think that's the thing that you, you have to analyze in this conference. The, the biggest difference between the Southeastern Conference and many other conferences across the country is the line of scrimmage. You know, those guys are so big, but they're also athletic. And I think that's what we really targeted this year in, in our defensive line. John has signed 19 guys. Is that the most you've ever signed in one class? on the defensive side and how gratifying was it to see all this kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, 19 guys. Well, well um, I can't remember how many we've signed from year to year. I'm just thankful that we got a great class. We've got kids that uh, wanted to be here. They're, they're high character. They're competitive. They're willing to put the time in and work. Um, and so that, that part of it is what I'm really excited about. How much different does spring ball look for you this year compared to last year in terms of, of four newcomers, I guess? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those guys are certainly going to – provide some competition. I think we're seeing the signs of that already uh, based on you know, the things that we're hearing not coming out of the weight room. And even before we went on the road, we had an opportunity to you know, work with these guys and, and some of our skill development things. Uh, and you saw that the competition you know, is already starting to create um, a much more, uh, much better habits for everybody uh, on both offense and defense. So that part of it's be huge. How, how big were those couple days when you guys didn't go to the convention to stay here? And had you, had you ever done that before too, to, to kind of stay here? Um, at, at different times, the thing that um, we were able to do this year because of the way the calendar was structured is, is that we were able to, you know, actually work with our guys. You know, obviously can't use a football and things like that, but certainly we got a chance to see them move around and, and do some things in a competitive nature. So, um, yeah, that was big. Well, is that, do you feel like that set the tone? I know you're still not being able to, you've been out on the road right. for a month. But yeah, no question. I think it, it set the tone with our younger players, but then it also set the tone with the guys that were currently on our mm -hmm. roster saying, hey, these guys brought some guys in here that can play. And, uh, I think it was a boost uh, for our entire football team. John, did you, did you find that commitments this year were more helpful to you guys in recruiting in terms of the the relationships they built with each other through the process? Certainly, uh, a lot more than, than last year. Last year, we had uh, a very short amount of time to try and develop relationships and, and put together a recruiting class. Um, this year was a lot, a lot easier in terms of developing those relationships and and with the relationships that we were able to develop with, with the players that committed to us, they reached out and were able to help us, you know, add to the class and, and really did a great job. How much 